Hi, if you're in the market for a slow cooker and you're not really sure what to go for, then I've come up with eight things to consider before buying one. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up. We found here in the UK that there's been a huge surge in energy prices over the last 12 months. And what we're finding is that people are looking for alternative ways of cooking your food because they realize how expensive it can be to put your oven on. Whether that's things like using your microwave, an air fryer, or going back to the traditional slow cookers. I mean, slow cookers have been around for years, but we're finding that there's been quite a surge in people wanting to buy these kind of products. And the main advantage is they're really easy to use and they're really cheap to operate. But really the main thing for me is that the food that you're cooking in a slow cooker is on the whole normally a lot nicer than if you're going to cook it, say in an oven, air fryer, or if you, especially if you're gonna do it in the microwave. What we're finding is that some people are trying to find alternative ways of cooking, things like a beef joint. Uh, I love a Sunday roast, and there's nothing better than a slow cooked roast joint. Uh, that's one of my favorites, and I still use a slow cooker. Although this list is in no particular order, the first one I'd consider to be one of the main considerations, and that's the capacity of the slow cooker. Now, capacities will vary a huge amount, and that really depends, I suppose, on how many people you're cooking for, or whether you want to batch cook. Uh, now, capacities generally start around one to one and a half liters, and they do tend to be really quite small. And I suppose if you're on your own or possibly cooking for two, then the one and a half liter ones are okay. Then you go up to three and a half, and then six and a half, and you can even get bigger than that. I have seen some around eight or nine liters. Uh, but on the whole, the main ones in the market tend to be around one and a half, three and a half, and six and a half liters. Or if you're not familiar with liters, then it tends to range from around three quarts up to 5.7 quarts. Uh, but just to give you an example, then this one is a six and a half liter capacity, or 5.7 quarts. Uh, but what you'll find is that that's, this is a really popular size for us. I think because people realize that to cook something in a slow cooker can take a long time. Clearly, if you're gonna, take, if you're gonna do it on slow, then on the whole, they can take around eight to 10 hours. Uh, and what you don't want to be doing is to do a small amount just for that meal. Uh, personally, what I would like to do is to do batch cooking where I'll cook extra, and then I've got it in the fridge or even pop it in the freezer. Really, my recommendation is when you're looking at the capacity of the slow cooker, just go slightly bigger than you think you might need. Uh, the main reason is if you're gonna do things like batch cooking, then it can really pay off in the future. Number two on the list, do you go for a model with a manual selection, like this model on the left, or go for a digital one like this on the right? And the main, I suppose, advantage of things like the Morphe Richards one here is that it's just easy to use. You've just got off, high, low, and medium. So that's just really as basic as it gets. But with this model on the right, because you've got the digital selection, then what you can do is you can actually time it to come on. So you've got the display on the front here, so you can select how long you want the program on for, uh, whether you want it on for, say, seven or eight hours. Uh, you can time it, you've got a delay timer as well. It's a lot more accurate, and personally, I love the way these operate, and I think it's a much better way of doing the, the slow cooking. Uh, you've also got a programmable timer, so if I want it to switch off at a certain time, then you can do that. But again, it comes down to your individual needs of the slow cooker. If you're going to be in the house all the time when your slow cooker's cooking, then perhaps something like this, where you've got the manual selection, is okay. If you're gonna be out, if you're gonna be out at work, if you want it to come on at a certain time or switch off at a certain time, and you want it on uh, cooking away while you're out, then something like this model is probably a better option for you. Number three, this is quite an easy one, it's the physical size of the slow cooker. Just have a quick measure. Uh, you'll find on any websites or any decent websites, you should have the physical size of the slow cooker. Just check before you buy it, because I know what people have done, they've bought things like this before, not necessarily just slow cookers, it could be all the other kitchen gadgets. Uh, it tends to go up in the, it, or go into the cupboard, or sometimes it'll sit on the work surface, but a lot of people tend to put these things away. So just make sure you've got enough space to put it in. Number four, and I know this is something not many people tend to think about, and that's the material of the pot that you're cooking in. Now I'll just show you this. So on this model, and actually both models, both of these have a metal insert. So because it's metal, then if you do drop it, then it doesn't matter. It might dent a little bit, uh, but that's normally the worst thing that will happen. If you've got a ceramic one, 
then on the whole it will crack and then you can't use it again or it will completely shatter. Uh, so that's something to consider. Just have a look at the material that these things are made of. Uh, have a look for one that is dishwasher safe as well. On the whole, all of these should be dishwasher safe. Uh, nowadays, uh, some of the very older models, you tend to find they weren't. Sometimes people want the ceramic type of dish because the advantage is you can just take it out of the slow cooker and then go and put it on your dining room table and you can serve it from there. It just looks a bit more appealing than having that sort on, sat on the dining room table. Uh, I suppose for some people, they really don't care. They're going to dish up in the kitchen, so it's not really a factor. But that's just something to think about anyway. Number five, and this is a huge one for me, how easy is it to keep clean? What you want to do, you want to make sure, as I just mentioned earlier, that some of the parts are dishwasher safe. But also, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the whole unit is easy to keep clean. Uh, now, quite a few brands, it's not just Morphe Richards, have come up with this idea, where you can just remove the lid. And that, that's a huge advantage, uh, because when it comes to cleaning, on the whole, I suppose a lot of the time, you can just uh, give it a rinse or give it a wash with hot soapy water. Uh, you could find that if something's been in here, if it's been cooking for seven or eight hours, then you can get quite a few, say, splashes or quite a few stains at the top. So it does need a good soak. Uh, but you've got the advantage of taking the lid off to either pop it in the dishwasher or get it nice and clean. But some of the simple models like this, on the whole, are quite easy to clean. As you come on to other models like this, then they become a little bit more difficult. So on the inside here, uh, I only know this. I will be honest, I did some lamb shanks in this very slow cooker last night and they were fantastic. I had them cooking for around seven or eight hours and at the end they were stunning. And the advantage of cooking the lamb in the slow cooker is the meat just falls off the bone when you're eating it. It's absolutely gorgeous. The four of us loved it. But what I wanted to do was to make sure it's nice and easy to keep clean uh, so that when we're washing up, uh, what we want to do is to give it a good wipe out inside. It's not really the sort of lid that you'll submerge into water or you won't put it into a dishwasher um, and that's I suppose one disadvantage of this kind of lid that it's a bit no, more difficult to keep clean compared to the Morphe Richards one. Number six, does the slow cooker have multifunction cooking? Now clearly the model on the left here is just a slow cooker and that's all it does and for some people that's all you want. For some people they want to do more cooking with the slow cooker and that's why on this kind of model, you've got multifunction cooking. And what I mean by that is that you can cook stew, rice, fish, meat. Um, you've got steaming, soup, pasta, browning. So there's a huge amount you can do. And some people want to do other kind of cooking. And in here, as well as slow cooking, you've got things like pressure cooking. There are some models where you've got the option to do things like air frying as well. So think about what you're going to use it for. I know it sounds a bit odd because some people are thinking, well, I just want to buy a slow cooker. But other people are thinking a bit more long term and that rather than having five or six gadgets or five or six cooking products within the kitchen, they would rather pay a bit more for something a little bit better. And I suppose it could be a combination of products all in one. Then it means you've only got one to put away in your cupboard. Number seven on the list, have a look for some of the extra functions that the slow cooker will have. That could be things like a keep warm function. So with a keep warm, what it would do, as it gets towards the end of the program, if you've finished it, so if you've had it on for say eight hours, then the keep warm function will essentially keep the food warm until you're ready to dish up. Now that can be really good. So if you've been out at work and if you time it to finish, uh, say at six o'clock, uh, if you were late getting back, then what it would do is it will just keep it warm for you until you're ready to serve. Other things, things like browning function, when it comes to cooking things like meat joints, on the whole what you want to do is you just want to give it a, a quick saute or just brown it first for a couple of minutes. And that can be either, uh, either in a frying pan or if you've got, say, a metal pan, then sometimes you can put that on the hob as well to brown. Some slow cookers will actually have a browning function as well. That can be really good. Also have a look out for the timer and that could be a delay timer to start the food cooking or it could be a timer to finish it at a certain time. So there's all these different functions. There's a lot to think about when it comes to buying the slow cooker. 
And finally, number eight, and I suppose it's always going to be an important factor, will be the price of the slow cooker. Now, prices do vary a huge amount, and that really depends on, I suppose, everything I've talked about so far. Uh, so here in the UK, you can get a basic slow cooker for around 15, 20 pounds, and you can go up to several hundred pounds for some of the higher end models, mainly the multifunction ones, like this one on the right. I hope you found it useful, the eight things to consider before buying a slow cooker, and I hope you've learned a little bit, or it's given you a little bit more of an insight into things to look out for. But I suppose just an overview, the main things for me will always be things like the capacity of the slow cooker. Don't necessarily just look at the moment, it always, always goes slightly bigger than you think you might need. Because for me at home, I tend to do a lot of batch cooking, and that can really help by going for something slightly bigger. Things like the multifunction cooking can be quite good. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're going to uh, cook in different ways or with different types of food, then going for something like this could be an advantage. Make sure it's easy to clean. That's a big, big thing for me. Uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to finish cooking, have a fantastic meal, then have to spend ages cleaning the slow cooker. Anyway, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any other things or if I've missed something, there might be something that I've missed that you're going, you didn't mention this, then just pop in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you've got any questions on slow cookers, then just again, pop it in the comments. If you've got a slow cooker, and if you really enjoy cooking with it, A, what have you got? So what kind of slow cooker have you got? Is it a basic one like the one on the left here? Is it a multifunction slow cooker on the right? And what's your meal of choice? What's your number one meal that you really enjoy cooking there? All I would normally say, is please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. I would appreciate that and just give us a quick like on the video as well. Thanks for watching.